Hello everyone. Today I will show you how to assign diaphragm for slabs in E tabs. From define diaphragms, and by default there is an existing diaphragm here defined by E tabs. We click modify, and there is two options: a rigid and a semi-rigid diaphragm. I I will discuss this uh, just a moment, but for this model I will use a rigid diaphragm. Let's click OK and from select object types floors select and we go to assign shell diaphragms and we click apply. And regarding the meaning of a rigid and a semi-rigid diaphragm, we can check these photos here. As shown in the first one, the rigid diaphragm assumption means that the slab will move rigidly without any in-plane deformation in the slab elements. However, for semi-rigid diaphragm uh, assumption, we allow for in-plane deformation in the slab elements as shown in this photo. Therefore, this modeling assumption affects the distribution of lateral force in the structural system due to a change in the diaphragm relative stiffness. However, the main question here, what is the criteria to select this assumption? And in this slide as shown here, according to ASCE, the first photo shown here, if the maximum diaphragm deflection at the center exceeds two times the average drift of vertical elements, then we should assume that the diaphragm is flexible However, according to ACI code, this photo I take from ACI code, they compute the aspect ratio of span length to depth ratio, and if it's smaller than 3, then we should assume a rigid diaphragm assumption. However, it's clearly mentioned in ASC and ACI that diaphragm flexibility should be considered in the cases where such effect will significantly affect the design actions. Hence, this modeling assumption is based on your engineering judgment you can decide which one you want to choose and going back to etaps as shown in the floor plan all all the joints of the slab are connected to one point at the center and this means all the joints of the slab are representative by this joint because they move as a ridge element as i mentioned before and in this way we are reducing the the analysis time needed in other words we are speeding up the analysis because we are reducing the effective degree of freedom in the system for example each joint here in this floor have six degree of freedom hence the number of degree of freedom in this floor is the number of joints multiplied by six therefore when we assign a rich diaphragm all the joints will behave similar to this one at the center, which has just six degree of freedom. Okay, I will open E tabs. Number of story Okay, let me define now the material. I will modify the compressive strength to 30 megapascal. 24. I will just keep the E now because this is not the aim of doing this. I just want to show you the difference. I will check if I have wall here. Okay, 250. And for slab, okay. Now for diaphragms, I will define this one is a rigid diaphragm. I will add a new one, I will call it semi rigid. Okay, okay.
Okay, now let's draw this lab. And one here. Okay, I will assign the first diaphragm for this slab and the second for this one. I will go down and assign fixed support. Okay, let's save this. Maybe Okay, now we need to apply a lateral force. I will apply it in the y direction. I will define it first. I will define a load pattern called maybe EQY. I will select seismic. I will add. Okay, in order to assign the lateral load in y direction, we need to, the, to assign it from this option, sorry, from distributed. And we need to draw a beam. I will define a beam now. Section, frame section. I will copy this one. I will name it dummy. I will provide very small. And we need also to define a compressive strength of concrete called zero. I will assign also zero for everything here. And for this one, and let me go again to the fra frame section we define now, the dummy. I will click here zero. Now, Let's draw it. Dummy. This one. And we need to mesh the frame. Frame auto mesh option. I click apply. Select again the, the beams and also from same option from assign frame. Now click frame floor meshing option and click include selected frame option in the mesh. Click apply. Okay. Now the last step is to select again these frames and go to frame load distributed. Select the earthquake Y. The direction is in global Y. We can select this one or this one, it's just the same. And I will assign a uniform load of 10 kN per meter and apply. And run. Okay, now the model is finished. I will check the deformed shape. As shown here, it's very clear now the difference. This slab moves rigidly because we assign a rigid diaphragm, while this one, it's like have in plane deformation. I will click the 3D view. Let's check it maybe in the 3D view. And another interesting thing is about the stresses. I will check F11. Okay, F11 means the the force in X direction due to earthquake in Y direction. What does this mean? We apply this force in the Y direction. Then there is a tensile 
stresses in this surface and we have compression stresses at this surface because F11 is in X direction. However, the unit of this is kilonewton per meter. And as shown in this one, for the slab we assign for it the rich diaphragm assumption. There is no force because as I mentioned, no inclined deformation. This means no force. The force we assign for this slab goes directly to the vertical elements and in this case they are the walls. Also we have another option here from draw, draw section cut. We can check the stresses as shown here. For example here as shown there is right side and left side. The right side is from here from the right side and the left side is just this one here. As shown here the the force F1 is 40 and in and in the left side is 28.57. If we draw the section cut from from down to up the right side is this one and the left side is this one here. However, if we draw draw it now from from up to down as shown the sides now change they switch the right side is now here the left and the left side is the right as shown in the I, I know it from the values here you, sh you need to check the values how they they change hence you should notice that the section cut you draw it here it has its own local axis and this section cut have the same local axis of a beam we are drawing it now from down to up here force number one is this one in this direction in the y direction as i said before and as shown here is 40 kilonewton what does this mean as you know we distribute a 10 kilonewton per meter and the length of this span is 8 meter then 10 times 8 is just 80 kilonewton therefore each support will take 40 kilonewton because this model is just very similar to a simply supported beam okay now moment around one which is as i mentioned before local axis one is the one goes in the y direction hence the moment around this axis is very small yes right and the Loc the moment around local axis 2 which is which is th th this one in the x direction also is very small lastly the moment around z axis is the value we need this means what there is in plane moment inside the slab because due to the force in this y direction we have in plane moment this is what we should notice from this value.